Yeah, so we're down at the Folkestone Warren, um, which is a very lush coastal habitat, but also quite marked by human presence and use. You come down here in the summer, there's a lot of people on the beach, a lot of people walk their dogs down here, some people camp. So we've just met a chap who's taken the seaweed from here to, to put on his allotment, so it's nice to see use being made of that. We've been harvesting here for a number of years, as I say, um, but when, when we harvest the plants, it's quite like um, pruning or, or cutting the lawn or harvesting vegetables from your garden. Um, anyone that's got brassicas will know that you can um, you can cut and things will grow back and many plants will actually thrive. There have been a lot of herbivores on the planet that will eat them right down to the ground. If plants couldn't tolerate that, they would have gone extinct long ago. We're going to have a lightning tour of Folkestone Warren just to see the sheer abundance of these plants, how healthy they are. Um, and this is after several years of us regularly harvesting. But we take these seeds and, and uh, scatter them around. It would be very surprising if some of those seeds were not, were not then germinating and producing new plants. So at least some of these plants are as a result of us scattering seeds here. Flavour some edible wild plant here, the wild rocket. Yeah. We'll take some of these rocket seeds and spread them around a bit. Look at this one here. They've been cut in the springtime in the course of our harvesting. You see the way the plant has branched out one, two, three as a result. And the obvious point to make is that if we were going to uh, impair population of this plant what you do is, is take away all the seeds but again they are so super abundant each plant producing thousands of seeds um, that there's a more than a, more than enough to go around so, it just so happens we, we, we don't have any interest in harvesting these seeds but there will be um, other species that do and again this is the abundance of the wild lands So we've got an area here with very little wild cabbage, there's just one plant there. Now maybe the cabbage knows what it's doing and just doesn't want to grow here. Um, but also, equally well, it may be that the cabbage seed just isn't making it to this spot. So that's where we're going to give it a helping hand. And I'm just going to put, just as an experiment if there's anything else, since we're filming it, um, I'm going to put that there and just see if anything comes of it. This time next year, we'll come and have a look. As a result of harvesting, a lot of food is coming off this piece of land here. Now that's food that would, would otherwise need to be grown somewhere else. The really um, problematic thing with regard to species loss and not conserving biodiversity um, is habitat loss because species need habitats where they can exist uh, with, with, with the other species that, 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 that they um, form communities with. And that can only happen on what people uh, describe as, as wild land. Now, I'm not so sure about the term wild because it implies people not having any influence. I think it's, it's, it's land where complex ecosystems are allowed to, to exist. 